Australia with one of the great blue boys of the modern era, and wouldn't they love to have him playing this week, Gilbert? Please welcome Anthony yes. Kudafides. Great to have you on the show, Kuda. Now, let's go back to the start when you were recruited to Carlton. I believe yeah. as a 14-year-old, you finished playing in 2007, so it was a long journey, but yeah. how did you first start at the Blues? I was uh, basically where I lived, Lola Thomasson was the Carlton zone. I was a Collingwood supporter and uh, dis dislike them with a passion now, so, so that's all right. <laughs> yeah, so basically I started when I was 14, went down there in their junior development squads from there, the under-19s, reserves, and then finally seniors. So. From 14 all the way to 34, I was able to spend my, uh, a lot of my life really at, at what I believe is the greatest club. Mm. Right, look, Kuna, thanks for coming on the show. You, you, was, you, was, you was a star. You stitched me up a couple of times, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now, look, uh, when players first come to a club and yeah. they get a number, you got number 43. That's a pretty. They normally give you a high number. But there's a reason behind that, isn't it? Yeah, there is. They gave me the high number because I thought, I think they thought I'd only play for two years or so, and then <laughs> that'd be the end of me. But uh, when I received number 43, my mum was born in 1943, so it meant something to me, and I, uh, I kept it. And although the club asked me later on to go down to a lower number, there was no way I was going to. I love it, and the 43 meant, meant a lot to me. So. Ricky Barham. Oh, yeah, Ricky Barham. I was going to say yeah, Ricky yeah, Barham. Wasn't he was he your favourite player? Because he wore 43. Yeah, he did too. Yeah, he was one of my favourites. And yeah, yeah. I recent. caught Ricky Barham once <laughs> up front of the wing. He with, said, "What are you doing?" Did you? Oh, no, I got you. <laughs> you got him with the elbow. That's what you got him with. <laughs> when you got to the club, obviously yeah. they're talking about some superstars there, but there were a heap of superstars. Who were the Who was the mm. one that uh, put you underneath his wing and said, "Hey, come with me, young Anthony, and I'll teach you uh, how how this place works." Probably surprising. John Doridge was probably the man who gave me a bit of time um, wow. compared to any other boys but I mean they were all wonderful we had such great leadership there at the club and we were so lucky you know Kernan and Bradley and Silvani mm -hmm. and these sort of guys but Dora was the one who took me under under his wing maybe because of his European background I'm not sure but <laughs> I just found him such a funny man and he was the one who really inspired me to maybe train that little bit harder and um, you know, inspired yeah, John, you to train yeah. harder now, he, he may not have trained that way yeah. <laughs> but he was telling me to train that way so. he's sitting back here going keep going Kuna, keep going <laughs> <laughs> He's just a wonderful man, Doro. I still to this day still keep in touch with him and uh, he was a really good player. 